Hi there everybody, I am back and today I wanted to play around with random number generators and I'm trying to start as simple as I can. I don't know that I can use the word simple and random number generator together in the same phrase, but I just did it. So I'm trying to start out where uh, the math is simple to learn the computation layer here. So in this particular video, what will happen, so let me show you a finished screen here, is every time the student clicks this button, this point will move. It's just going to give them a random point here uh, from negative 9 to 9 for both the x and the y value. And then, this is infinite. I mean, they could sit here all day and do this. So they would type in the x value, so that's an 8, and the y value is 0, and it will let them know if they're correct. Let's try again. Oh, what is that? Negative 9, and that's 6. And they could do that over and over and over again. So I want to show you how to build this. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a button component. And I like to be funny when I name them. This is but2. A little, little humor on the back end of Desmos computation layer. Get it? I apologize. I am the mom of boys, so that's funny. Graph component is next. Do I need to? Yes, I do. I'm going to name this graph2. Again, I always um, put the number that corresponds with the screen. Okay, now we're going to click on the graph to edit the graph. We're not going in computation layer there just yet. And I want this ordered pair A, B. Okay, that's all I'm going to do in here. Now the computation layer for it. So go in the computation layer for the graph and what we're going to do is add the random number generator. So what I noticed in the forum and the examples is they use R for their variable, so I'm going to stick with the same thing. So if you happen to go onto the forum or anything like that, it will look similar. And we want a random, see there it is, the second one down, random number generator. Now I'll show you what to do later if you don't want the button, but for now we do have the button and we called it but2. <laughs> and we're going to click on press count or type press count. All right. So we've established that, yes, we're going to have a random number generator. So now I want to do this for the numbers that are in my graph. I call them A and B. So for the first number, A, which is actually my x value, I'm going to get a random number. So R dot, I want it to be an integer. And now here in parentheses, you're going to put um, the lower and the higher range here. So I'm going to go from negative 9 to positive 9. I'm going to do the same thing for number B. Oops. N. Not, there we go. Number B. I want a random integer from negative 9 to 9. Okay. Now at this point, let's see what we have. When I preview it, you can see that every time we hit this button, it changes. Now we could change what this button says. Right now it says try it. If I go down here, I can... Can I delete it? What's going on? Oh, I just type. Um, uh, press this button. <laughs> I think on the last one I have a... <clears throat> excuse me. Get a new point. Whatever. Just type something or, or leave it as try it. That's fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to give the students a place to write the values of this ordered pair and then get feedback on whether they're correct or not. So I'm going to add a note that gives directions, a note to say this is where you put the x value, and a note to say this is where you put the y value. All right, so determine the x and y values of the point. Okay. Oh, also I'm going to need a note component 
up here uh, to give them feedback. Okay, so tell me what X is, tell me what Y is. Okay, so now I'm gonna give them a place to actually type it because here this is what it looks like right now and they have no place to type their answer. So we need math input. I'm gonna need two of them and we're gonna have to make sure they end up in the right spot. Where are they? Here they are. I want one for the X and I want one for the Y. So I'm gonna call this math 2X and I'm gonna call this math 2Y. Call it whatever you need to call it. Okay, just don't forget. All right, now they have a place to put their answers and now we need to let them know if they're right or wrong. Okay, so up here in this note component, I'm gonna click on computation layer and I'm gonna call this variable two, A. Remember how I did this? Okay, so what I want to happen is I want whatever they type in for the X value to be the A value. Okay, so we want math 2x, the numeric value, to be equal to what I have in the graph component. So I called that graph 2 and it was number A. Alright, so the x value they type in should be equal to the random number that came up for letter A, for variable A. Well, that will be if they get the x value right. I need them to get both the x and the y values correct. So, and, so this would be math 2y. The numeric value has to be equal to whatever the graph says the numeric value of b is. So, what graph? Graph 2. What about it? I want the number b. Okay, so that's how... Um, so if variable 2 happens, that means they're correct. So variable 2b, that's my when otherwise statement I like to use. So when variable 2a happens, I'll give the students feedback on that. Otherwise, that means they're incorrect, and I'll give them feedback on that. So here's the feedback I want them to have. If they're right, you can put in anything you want if they're right. Here's what happens if they're wrong. All right, now I need this to show up in the note. So we have our content, correct. And you, you guys know if you've been watching here, this is my typical thing to put in. And my students are familiar with it. There we go. All right, let's check it out. So here we have our ordered pair. It's telling you right now my answer is wrong. Determine the X and Y values of this point. So um, that's three. And that's negative four. Oh, I'm right. I don't know that I like the button there. I might move that. Let's move that down to the bottom. I want that all the way down here. So it's almost like, okay, after they do the problem, then it's like, press this button. Uh, what is this? Three and negative six. I want a new problem. Look at this working. Two and zero. Beautiful. All right, let's say you don't want this button. It's just a, a once and done deal that either, you know, they get this random point, it's different than all their classmates, they're gonna type it in and move on to the next problem. No button. So here's what you're gonna do for that. I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole thing. And here on screen three, I'm gonna show you what you do. Just get rid of the, the button component. And that might do it. Nine, three. It does, and then they would just move on to the next problem. Um, the other thing you could do is when you're actually typing it in, you don't need anything here. Nothing is needed um, because you're just getting the, the starting one and that's the end of it, I guess. Submit and it's over. Okay, well there you go. There's just a little bit with a random number generator. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, and there's a lot of great things we could end up doing with random numbers. Have a great day.